Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to talk of a topic that I have had direct experiences about. A topic people consider an evil, something that should be erased from the face of the earth. Whoa. I could still feel as if it was just yesterday. I was only 12, and at that night at about 10.30, when I was deeply concentrated in writing minutes of our association, I was disturbed by people screaming, following gunshot. My parents quickly grabbed me and was just about to flee when someone started shooting and bombing at our house. We could do nothing, but we fled on the ground. I could feel the pounding of my heart louder than the gunshot. When parts of the ceiling started falling onto the ground, my father was quick in pulling up things over us to minimize the harm. I still can't remember how long we lay there till the sound subsided. We got up as from death, feebly staggering. It was a gory scene. People lay dead everywhere, blood running down the road. Police, ambulances, tooting away, and I wondered whether it was a horrible dream. We were the victims of a brutal attack. The feelings that entered my mind after experiencing it never left me. I saw how people suffered for no fault of theirs. My playmates among my neighbors lay still, and the property they had gained in toil in a lifetime disappeared within seconds. How I feared death, and I could imagine how the people who are directly involved in it would feel. What really is war? And why is there war? For what prospect? I consider it planned by few through utter selfishness to achieve a selfish goal. The most important cause of the war is nationalism. Born in the minds of men, born out of hatred, selfishness and racial differences. A false sense of pride and prestige nationalism. The pathetic side of this is that some nations have made war their way of living by selling weapons and encouraging war to spread. Today, we live in an age where technology has zoomed up to the highest. Man has invented everything to facilitate an easy and comfortable life. But on the other hand, he threatens humankind by manufacturing nuclear weapons that will destroy not only human life, but the all life forms all together in seconds. Any war between two powerful nations is sure to result in a world war. It's necessary to abolish war if mankind is to survive. Some countries have tasted the most bitter wars. Japan, for example, was trampled down by the atomic bomb when it was tried at Hiroshima. Its soft effects are still suffered. Though things went bad for Japan those days, today Japan extends its selfless aid to prevent spreading of warfare without taking any revenge from the world for what they faced long before. I was lucky to participate as a junior ambassador in 1995 for the Asian Pacific Children's Convention. Amidst children of different colors and of different nations, I felt comfortable seeing how cooperation could result in joy and brotherhood. It was then that I made up my mind to try and to do my duty in trying to make the whole world aware of peace and the futility of war. Back in Sri Lanka, I was once more lucky to be a member of the Bridge Club Sri Lanka which is a branch of the Asian Pacific Children's Convention. Founded in 1998, the Bridge Club is an active member of noble activities. 
I have put my wholehearted efforts into its related activities in helping the ones in need. I have experienced and am still experiencing the agony of the children displaced by war. It's like a burning pain. I have to say my small country, known among you as the pearl of the Indian Ocean, was tossed in a sea of war. The storm has damaged part of it, but the rest of it still flourishes in its natural beauty. Many tourists do visit my country to enjoy its scenic beauty and to experience our company, as we are known to be a hospitable nation. I visited the north and the east of my country with the other club members and saw with my own eyes what war has brought on people who are my own brothers and sisters. We had been no visitors to them just a few years ago, but today we see them as strangers. They see us as strangers. We took many things that we considered as their needs. Some doctors accompanied us to give medical help. Their faces spoke of the fate, and they had an empty look with no hope for the future. And so I felt it most. I was so determined to visit them again, despite of others pleading me not to go there, as my life too will be in danger. I took a firm step. I did visit them again, and that time too, I went there with my club members. Nothing would ever stop me from participating in the, any of the activities that would bring peace to my people. I won't consider this as a visit, but a must that I consider as my duty. I live to make others understand that gaining peace should be the ultimate goal in our life. My club constituted of members of all races and we feel no differences. We get together to discuss our projects and there's no discrimination. We work like one and we honor everyone's opinion and attitude in making our projects a success. While Sri Lankans suffer from the terrorist tour, news about regional conflict is always heard over media, always on an advancing scale. The Kashmir battle, the Iran-Iraq conflict, and the Israel-Palestine war are none new to us. The lost lives and the demolished buildings can't be replaced. And I doubt where the statistics can say about all that has happened. The day-to-day -day development and the war that goes hand in hand with it has taken away the color of a teenage life. Many are gifted T-56 missile launches and showers of grief only. If one can bring together the tender of all, he would be the noble one of the human race. Ours in an ideal age, and this is the ideal time for us to show to the world what a lot we can do with our small ability. Our efforts, if directed towards ending of war, will be in reality an equivalent to invite the colorful rainbow to light up the blue skies, thereby avoiding devastating torrential rain. Let us have our arms stretched out in prayer till our aim dawns. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, another big applause to Rendika. All right, Rendika, if you could stay up on the stage. Now the judge will ask a question for you. Mr. John D. Mills, please. Uh, Mr. Amasodia, thank you for your presentation. I was impressed with your heartfelt words and the 
noble objectives of your talk. I was wondering if